have to sort this out on my own. Without the council. And without you. have to sort this out on my own, without the council. have to sort this out on my own, without the council. have to sort this out on my own, without the council.
stay here any longer. I have to sort this out on my own. Without the council. I have to sort this out on my own, without the council. Hello and welcome to Dyad in the Forest. Man, we got some news coming today. We had a uh, yeah, deadline reported on casting for Sabine Red. So Sabine Wren, I said Red, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> we got the, the artwork for uh, the new book, Star Wars Brotherhood. And man, I'm excited about that book. Um, we were really surprised when IDW was starting to slow down on the Star Wars. Well, now we know why the license has switched back over to Dark Horse. And then also we're going to hang out with you guys for a bit. I'm super excited to just chill and talk right here on Dyad and the Force. Unseen for generations, but Dyad in the Force. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Died in the Forest. And for some reason, our guest is not showing up on the video. Um, but we are, in fact, this isn't a joke. We're 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 joined by Booba underscore Fett or Christina on TikTok. Um, while, while I try to fix this, why don't you introduce Wait, yourself? Why am I not there? I'm literally sitting there. <laughs> it's, it's when you were looking for. A criminally underrated Star Wars game called oh. Masters of Karakasi. But it, it's weird to just have like a, like she froze a video feed as a way to hack in and it's like sneaking around the office or something. 
Uh, but yeah, how, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. It's great to see both of your faces. Yeah, I've been I've been wanting to get you on you know high ground and die ahead for a while. Sadly, it sometimes takes some time to get everyone on that we want oh, to yeah. get on. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming out. And thanks there for you having are. me on. How how long Yay! how long is a while, Brandon? Um, I don't know, <laughs> four months. Really? It only took me a week. Oh no, from from me wanting to, but waiting to have a a good enough topic. You know, I was trying to. Whenever someone makes most of the content about something, I was waiting waiting for Book of Boba Fett to come back. But <laughs> I'm just busted. Uh, Christina, do you want to introduce yourself? P- tell people where they can find you and what you do. Hi, my name is Christina. Uh, I go by the nickname Chris or Booba Fett. Uh, I am currently on TikTok and Booba underscore Fett, and also on Instagram. Although I mostly just regurgitate my TikTok stuff back onto Instagram. Um, just a giant Star Wars nerd. I'm a gamer. Love Marvel just general geekery i try to keep it positive but i also keep it real so that's <laughs> a little bit about me you also like jane's help up i love jane's help up <laughs> kevin smith is one of my favorite people <laughs> i mean it's almost criminal for me to admit but that was when i was like we need her on it was the 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 noise 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 rap <laughs> I I love everything Kevin Smith does, and I love that he's one of us. He's a nerd, and he yes. loves all of it as much as we do. Mm-hmm. It would be it would be a sad day if he turned into like you know that corner of Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's it's funny though because he, he he like like us remembers the the dark times. Oh and, yeah. You know, like if you if you've lived through it once. You're like, oh yeah, this is good. This is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I remember the, I remember all of the stuff that happened after the prequels came out, like all too well. Yeah. yeah. I mean after after you, you mentioned both Jedi Power Battles and Masters of Terracos, it was like, okay, I know I know a lot about her already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's catch up with the chat. Let us know uh, you're here. Cal Pogs or Ramens in the chat. Drop them if you're if you're here. But uh, Cal Four is here. Saint Pat, Starfax, JC Productions, Xcore Gamer Skills forward into the black. Christian Flores, Ace Bronx, Nedrex TT, Jordy Jedi, uh, Robert Kenobi, Carter, Brooke, Brooke saying, uh, Booba Fett. I got some fans in here. <laughs> Um, Darthman86 Xanatos1138 um, Welcome to the show and thank you for tuning in uh, Hopefully yeah. the emoji wall is, is working If not, whatever Just drop those robins <laughs> anyway And uh, a quick shout out to, to Cal for in the chat I was just talking about uh, you to Booba and how y'all are always looking for people to play dead by daylight with so just saying come join me <laughs> or i'll join you whichever yes play phasmophobia really. but it's so scary we just we, we just got done being sherpas to cal's sister who was, it was the first time for them and they were super scared but it all numbs after a while i guarantee you, you. say that but i feel like I mean, I've been playing Dead by Daylight for probably four years now, and I still get jump scared. Not all the time. Usually it's the Michael Myers that gets me, because they're quiet and scary. Um, but something whispering in my ear when I got headphones on, I, I don't like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phasmophobia is not, like, gratuitous with its scares. Like, of course it's going to have a jump scare, but it's not, like, in your face. Like, you're That's kind of... <laughs> you don't, don't like to simmer in the terror? It. <laughs> Come on, like going and wandering with a flickering leg. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sounds like a great idea. Brandon knows how to simmer in terror, right? Uh, yeah. No, I I, uh, I do that on a regular basis um, when we are about to engage teams um, <laughs> for Apex Legends <laughs> because they are. I play with Element and Cal there and they're so much better than me. Then I'm like, okay, all right, you got this. You got to do it, like. 
Huh? That's gonna be me if I play Phasma with you guys. Uh, it's, it's gonna be the potato that you're gonna have to like literally push along. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm scared. So just a real quick test and I'm gonna replay this notification simply because I'm proud of it, but just so you guys uh, see if you guys can hear it in the call so you don't talk over it or it, it doesn't talk over you. Uh, a lightsaber ignition? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That was a Booba Fett subscribing to the channel. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, Nedrex says, the first few times I played Phasmo, I wanted to cry when the ghost whispered to me. Yeah, that was not, it was so loud in my ear. It felt, no. <laughs> I, I woke up my family because I legitimately was like, nope. <laughs> like loudly and woke everybody up. Fixing that there, that's fixed. Okay, we're watching things unfold live, people. Um, but it doesn't always whisper in your ear, <laughs> right? <laughs> do creepy shadows and move stuff and make grumbly noises. Yeah, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, for, for me, I just. I just don't enjoy that type of game, and I'm so behind on my backlog of games to play. And I'm like, if I'm gonna play something, like I need to finish Ghost of Tsushima, um, and I, I need to finish Guardians of the Galaxy, and oh yeah, you know, I, I need to catch up on Spotor. Um, you know, I, although I will be making a new character when this new expansion drops. Uh, because they have brand new mechanics from day one. So I'm really excited about that. Mm. Yeah, we have a lot of, oh, there's a lot of games to finish. Uh, are there any outstanding games you're waiting to finish, Christina? This is going to be so bad because Uncharted is my favorite game franchise next to Last of Us. And I still have not finished Uncharted 4. I, uh, I mean, was, I, was, I keep moving. We move a lot because we're a military family. Um, and every time I pick it up, something happens. I have to put it down. I did finish Last of Us 2. I played it through it twice. Um, so I need to finish Uncharted 4. It's been out for years now. Um, I also, also, this is really terrible. I need to finish Red Dead 2. I didn't finish it. It's well, been spoiled for me. By those now, are all great it. games. And as a as as a huge <laughs> fan of Last of Us and of the Uncharted series, like probably equally as big of a fan, I understand why you didn't finish four. I didn't either. <laughs> I finished four, not Lost Legacy though. Um, and then Red Dead. I I, I was playing it when I and then I like slowed down to, to play other things and then it's not a game you can just go back to because the yeah. controls are so like they require so much and I was telling you like when I got COVID and I was like I was at home I tried to play the game but I was half sick and I couldn't remember the controls and so like I, I walk up to my horse and then I punch my horse and it starts running away <laughs> I was like I thought I was I thought that was the mountain button. <laughs> I and thought then the, we were friends. And, and then I finally get on the horse, and then my controller like slips, and I pull the trigger and I shoot someone. And now I'm in a horse chase. And I'm like, okay, I just I I gotta stop. I just I can't play this right now. And I, I haven't gone back. I just remember the time in RD, RD, RDR two when I came in with like a pelt to sell, but instead of the interact button, I shot the merchant in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's a priceless interaction, to say the least. Why is there not an undo button? <laughs> I've got pelts to sell. Oh, boom. <laughs> and it's like auto save. And you're like, no, no. <laughs> Uh, let's see here with the chat really quickly. Uh, Xcore Gamer Skill says the platforming is why I never finished that game. That's uh, I don't understand that one because the platforming is pretty great in Uncharted, but uh, it is. Yeah, I get that about the first one. Um, there was times in the first one where I'm climbing something and then all of a sudden I just turn and jump 180 degrees off of a cliff and I'm like, it's not, it's not the buttons I pushed. Like, the it's hell? a feature. It's part of the charm. Okay. <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. I understand <laughs> that one. Um, 
okay we we've we've been derailed um <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you put gamers in a call uh but uh let's talk about the biggest news i, I like to start with the biggest news um oh wait no actually i have a surprise announcement to make uh i'm debuting our newest um our newest design on the merch store today uh and i would like to show it to you guys right now not that one but that is a uh, that is important for you guys uh <laughs> if you want to if you want to win a trip to the star cruiser uh go to star wars bring home the bounty sweepstakes.com and enter i don't know if you guys have not entered yet um what kind of star wars fans are you um but <laughs> enter you know okay this is the real announcement sorry guys for dragging this right here this is this is the newest shirt on the Diet in the Force store, the Ultra Ego Vegeta. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it's available in black, black, or white, or black, navy, um, or white. I think it looks the best in white, so you can see all of it. Um, that's hand-drawn, and it's a custom colora uh, coloration because we don't know how, how Ultra Ego looks. In, in actuality, so go to seventhelement.net slash merch to check this out and get your hands on it. I will still never understand how you can draw so good. I mean, I understand it's practice and I just don't do it, but like, I don't know, that's just really good. You heard it here yep. first, folks. <laughs> Brandon said, I just don't understand how you draw so good. I understand that it's practice. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> There's, there's, I mean, there, there's a bit of, of both stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you can watch Gotta LeBron James play it. basketball by practice, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm gonna be him, you know? Yeah, I feel you. Okay, so this news Nat Natasha Lou Berdizo was supposedly cast as a Sabine Wren. Okay, there's no official confirmation from Lucasfilm thus far and from Berdizo's camp, but such publications. Lots of Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots of publications reporting that she has been cast as Sabine Wren. Now, if you've watched us before, you know that Chaco and I are huge purveyors of Jessica Henwick um, as Sabine. But as I look at this picture, I, I see a hell of a whole lot more than <laughs> Jessica Henwick now. What are you guys' thoughts on this? I'm extremely excited. I was caught by complete surprise yesterday going through the news and saw that and was like, this can't be real. I saw it on Variety and then I saw it on IGN. I was like, okay, this is reliable sources reporting this. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. And just seeing her face, I'm like, that is Sabine. Yeah, that is, yeah. that's her, that's her face. That's That looks just like her to me. And I don't know the actress, so I can't speak on her talent um but i kind of quickly googled her and she seems like she's a very talented person and just she looks like her that's sabine <laughs> yeah i mean i've seen her in the society but that's my only experience with the actress but she was she was great in that series and uh i'm actually knowing that and like you know searching the memory banks for what i remember of that show uh, you know, it is enough for me to say that she's she's a dead ringer for Sabine in both voice, like and look. Um, what about the the physicality? Is there any physicality that happens in society? Um, not to the like, you know, Mandalorian <laughs> degree, <laughs> but you know, the, the premise of society is that they go on like a school trip and then they come back to their their town and everyone, all the adults, and like everyone's gone, so they have to self-govern, right? So there, there's a there's a healthy degree of physicality in like the social dynamics of like Lord of the Flies type of things, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, I, I was, am a big proponent for Jessica Henwick. Um, but I feel like I'm going to get enough of that in the Matrix movie because uh, she looks badass in that movie. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy for it. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. I think 
the ages probably line up a bit better. Uh, but I, I, again, I don't have the experience with this actor. So, but I, I know it's, you know, these, these are Filoni's children and he's gonna, he's gonna be very careful in making these selections. Uh, I just recently um, looked up Natasha speaking Mandarin in China. So I was like, she passes the Asian test. <laughs> I mean, she's she is Chinese, uh, half Chinese, but um, I was I was never that was never a thing. A- Asian test. That's just me being hyperbolic. Um, <laughs> Julia says it looks like Bordizo has martial arts background. Well, that's just that just seals the deal. Yeah, if, if, if we got that, then we good. We we good. We're dandy. Now, what does this say about the Ahsoka show, though? What does this confirm for for you guys, at least story wise? Well, I mean, I think that we know that we're going to see more of the ghost crew, which I will potentially die happy if I get to see like live action Hera and Ezra and Zeb, which also brings another, are they going to do Steve Bloom as Zeb and then just have him do the voice? Like there's all kinds of things in my head, very excited about the potential of seeing live action ghost crew. <laughs> what about, yeah, are they going to take oh, him from his bed and breakfast? <laughs> I know. Yeah, he is, he is kind of off in his happy little like hidden land. It would be nice to see him. And also like I seeing Sabine can bring things also to the Mandalorian because she had Darksaber. So I was kind of like, ooh, this is going to throw another interesting thing into that whole storyline as well. Yeah. And I hope that this can answer the question that people were lobbing of like, what do you mean you have to fight for it? Uh, Sabine gave it to her. And I'm like, obviously that didn't work. So for whatever reasons it didn't work, don't know. Yeah. this is probably, but maybe we can get a direct answer. Yeah. But you know what else it also, it also kind of like leads into the need for an Ezra because we have all of the ingredients now we had, you know, Ahsoka, we had Ahsoka searching for Thrawn. Now we have Sabine. And then, you know, mix that up in a cauldron, you, you get the end of Rebels, and that's what they're doing. They're searching for Ezra. Do you think season... Do you, is this a limited series, or is this... Do you think that they're, they're going to find Ezra? Yes. <laughs> I think yes. so, too, yes. Uh, it, it's such a like, hopeful yes, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> like, 75% of the way through, they're going to find him. And, but the real question is, do you think that Ezra is going to be able to meet and, and hug a little Jason Sindula for the first time? <sighs> I will literally openly weep. <laughs> Uncle Ezra? I'm also really Uncle concerned Ezra. it's going to be something not so happy, like with what happened with Echo when they found him. Like That makes me really nervous that we're going to have like some sort of horrible... Thrawn's doing some sort of horrible experiment on Ezra because he's a force user and so like I'm also stealing myself for that kind of feel <laughs> we've been hurt too many times by Filoni for me to completely trust it to be happy <laughs> oh, that's true. I feel that I, I've actually been saying for a while that we'll, we'll meet him and, and him and, and Thrawn will actually probably be get along well um, I think a lot of Thrawn is going to rub off on Ezra and he's going to be a different person than they remember and we're going to have to like bridge that gap <laughs> Brooke says uh, no Ezra and Thrawn are on a farm together just being bros <laughs> <laughs> I mean that could still happen I was just asking if they're going to find them is it a space whale farm? Ooh. <laughs> sustainable whale farming <laughs> Uh, no, they could just find Ezra, and then Ezra was is with Ron, and they're like, "No, nah, we're, we're we're good farming here." But thank you for looking for me. <laughs> uh, Julia says, "Speaking of Jason, would Corky not be an amazing person to include in that storyline?" Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> I love how there's just there's just Stop one wrong. tool. <laughs> Not wrong though. Like, where is Corky? He's probably dead. May the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Rude, but probably true. I mean, he, he's he's around. I, I feel like I feel like there's still story for him. And uh, Filoni has said as much. 
but they're not ready for that. And normally I don't buy into, into fan conspiracies, but that's one, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, nephew my butt. There's... Of who? <laughs> that's one... <laughs> That's one, that's one that I might buy into a little bit where I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe I could totally, he does look a little bit like, like Obi-Wan. I could believe that. I mean, they're, the hair, everything about Corky just screams Satine and Obi, uh, Obi-Wan. Their best characteristics. The track. Yes, it does. Uh, Julia Christine has added on to this. My dad was a Jedi, and I never got to know him. It was a very specific experience, and if Jason and Corky are not Force-sensitive, they can't relate to Luke and Leia. It's a totally different experience. That's, uh, that's beautiful, Julia. If Corky knows. If Corky knows... If if Obi-Wan is his father, and he knows that Obi-Wan is his father. Do you think Satine would tell him? No. Probably not. And she probably she told him had... his dad was a navigator on a spice freighter. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, listen, I just know that, like, he's the, he's the nephew. Like Geoda. He's the nephew to Satine and, and Bo-Katan. Where's the third sister? <laughs> There's no third sister anywhere. Um, Suspish. That's definitely sus. Uh, okay, we need to move on from this cor this quirky fix, Julia. <laughs> I'm sorry to do this to you. Um, let's see. What, what else? I mean... I kind of feel like this means also that they 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 have a Sabine to cross over with Mandalorian, um, and it would be interesting to see Sabine mix it up with Din, Grogu, Boba Fett, even Fennec Shand. Can you imagine that that fight? I'd love to see Sabine fight some uh, some. I, w I would like to see Sabine fight Boba Fett. So that he could have he so he could have been mollywopped by two Mandalorians <laughs> while he's trying to badmouth Mandalore. <laughs> uh, you guys have any final thoughts about this this casting? Just bring it on. Yeah. Did you did you guys say that in, in unison? <laughs> I've, I've noticed that we've even like been taking sips and stuff in unison. And like, All right, that's weird. <laughs> Just don't say anything. <laughs> I was like, is that the echo she was talking about? No, that's that was Brandon. Um, all right, so moving on, we do have. Uh, let's see here. We do have a, a, a cover reveal for the Brotherhood book. And a lot of people are speculating as to what this means. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it. Brotherhood by Mike Chan. Uh, and I, I guess this is the business that this is that business on Catanamoidia, right? We're finally getting that book. Yeah. A lot of people were also pointing to the Open Circle uh, Armada. Um the background forming such a logo i don't know I, it's it's just a sphere to me but <laughs> i was just seeing people you know throw out some reaches um what do you think of this cover chaka i don't like it and, and, and i i feel like everyone just has been raving about it and i, I haven't wanted to rain on anyone's parade personally i don't like it it feels like um, it, it, it looks like it's part of like the, the the awkward like photographs that they took of everyone under with the blue screen back with backgrounds. Like I don't, it feels very <laughs> it feels very dated, and I, I don't know. I just it's mullet one Kenobi that's doing it. I think it is. They used mullet, mullet one Kenobi. <laughs> it's it's like Miss Aggie's like terrible Anakin shirt from like 
the late 90s that's hot topic is like reselling but it's where it's super realistic but it just i don't know i don't love the cover myself if you do that's awesome yeah. well my initial thought on it was well you're right it, it does look like their green screen like set photos or their promo photos and, and, it, and it is exactly that because they don't have any newer photos of them that's that you know that's all in the archive so they wanted to do a, a cover for this and they're like Where, where's the hard drive from like 2002 you know they could have had someone dr well I can't tell from this particular picture if it's drawn or if it's a photograph that they like just overlaid it but yeah but I mean why not hire somebody to do a completely I think those those stances they have are actually like stock <laughs> stances I know that I've seen them before you know what it looks like it looks like the bookmarks they used to sell at Barnes and Noble when the yes. prequels came out that's exactly what it looks like like I have an Amidala one like that like like you you would that would be part of the book fair like the little order <laughs> catalog and yeah. those poses were like yeah yes that's exactly what that looks like. Oh my gosh, Julia. She was like, look up the terrible uh, Jedi Apprentice and Jedi Quest covers. And I was about oh. to refer to those. Like, it reminds me of Watson's uh, Apprentice ground. books. And, and it's I have like, right in front of me. Oh my gosh. They're bad. Can you show everyone? Oh, just give us an example. Yeah, let me get up and go get it. I have to go get up and move it. Um. But Brooke stands up with my mullet. Oh god, this one's terrible. Oh Jesus. I will, say, I, remember. Okay. I, I will say nobody pulls off the mullet like Obi-Wan. Like what is that? That's horrifying. That's nightmare fuel. <laughs> Come on. Or like... Well, that one's not so bad. This one's pretty bad. Like why are they posed like this? Like what is... That was from their green screen photos, yeah. I guess. And this is like, they did a good job whoever this kid is that they had for like young Obi-Wan, but these are so weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact flavor they give off. Reminds but the Yoda me of... one is terrifying. <laughs> but like it's it. like, it's like they, they, they just took a bunch right? of photos back then, right? For that stuff. It's very early 2000s. Yeah. You say something, Brandon? Oh, I, I didn't see the last book. Was that Dark uh, Rendezvous? Dark Captain Rendezvous. Temple, Uncertain Path, Defenders of the Dead, Hidden, yeah, Hidden Past, and then, yeah, Dark Rivals, this one. Okay. okay. That's all, all right. of them, isn't it? <clears throat> oh, I'm missing one. It's, I probably forgot to grab it, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this segment has been Choco Drags the Cover. Oh no, we're all pretty much dragging it. I'm sorry to, to just throw you under the bus. <laughs> hey, it can't be worse than the Yoda one I just showed you, though. So, you know, at least it's bad. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just, I'm super excited for the book, though. I think the book's going to be amazing. I can't yeah. wait to, like, jump into this time period because this is, we, we haven't seen this. This is something I've been begging to see. I feel like, I feel like it's easy to forget that the Clone Wars Anakin that we see is a Jedi Knight throughout that whole entire time period. He is not Obi-Wan's apprentice. And so, you know, there's like a lot of, when you look at things, you're like, oh, they should have told Anakin this is, you have to realize he's a coworker at this point in time. Like he, he wasn't supposed to know some of this stuff. We're like, you know, do, do your job. But I, I want to see that. Uh, oh, and then in the uh, Revenge of the Sith novelization, there is some like internal dialogue of Anakin when Obi Wan or will tell him to do something. He's like, "I'm not your, I'm not your your Padawan anymore. Like, you can't tell me to do this stuff still." But he still does it. I don't know. It's I want to I want to approach that subject. Is he, is really he a knight beautiful. at this point? That book is going to be him getting knighted and their oh. first foray into being brothers, being equals. Okay, because I was looking at it, it looks like he still had his braid, that that hairstyle with the, the Padawan braid. Or it could just be the cover, it's just doing whatever it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they, they made it clear that he, he gets knighted in this book. That's, gotcha. that's part of this book. 
Um, Julia loves the cover because because it is in the Jedi Apprentice flavor. Um, <laughs> and that's why we love you, Julia. Uh, I think a lot of the those photos are also costume tests, which makes it even better. Yes. I, in fact, I think I have an art book. That's probably where <laughs> I've seen those poses is from that art book. We're just a whole bunch of like broken souls who love things because they are bad. <laughs> You're not um, wrong. Uh, Star Wars is camp. We, we've, we've established it. Is, absolutely. That's why it's so much fun. Uh, I love how we're getting so much more Obi-Wan and Anakin content right now. You said it, St. Pat. You said it. And they deserve it. You know, like, they really do after all of the vitriol they got from the prequels. Hayden and Ewan both deserve it, and I know that it was hard to get them back for these projects, and I'm so glad they're willing to come back, because we don't... Well, we do, because we like them, but, like, uh, <laughs> the Toxic fans do not deserve it. But I'm we glad deserve that all of the nice things. <laughs> we deserve all the nice things. Um, but I'm glad that they are, and I know that they love it, they genuinely do, and it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited for this. Yeah. No, they that's do why, definitely do. That's why we need Liam to come back in some capacity. We know he loves Star Wars. Even if, even when they were hated, he was like, I don't care. It was awesome. I loved it. You, you <laughs> know they're going to put his voice in, in Obi-Wan Kenobi. They did in, they did in, uh, in Clone Wars. So that's his voice. Mm-hmm. So they've got to incorporate that because everybody loves Qui-Gon. They even, uh, Dave Filoni talks about like, you're like, uh, we don't know if, if he would be willing to do something like something small like this. And like, they reached out through another person that they knew. And he's like, yeah, of course, Heck let's yeah. do it. <laughs> we, and it makes it know. so good because his voice is so his voice. Like that, it's a hard voice to uh, mimic. So when I heard it, I immediately was like, that's not another voice actor. That's him. Yeah. Yeah. We know for sure that he's going to, he's going to be in the Kenobi show. Mm-hmm. Like the the number one answer that they give in interviews when they ask like when they ask are you going to be in the show, they always say I haven't been approached or I haven't spoken to anyone at Lucasfilm, and at this point we're used to actors saying that, and our first example of it paying off was you and McGregor at D twenty three finally he's like are you going to be playing Obi Wan Kenobi again and he's like yes. And he's like, oh, I've been saying this for nine years. Like, <laughs> I, I haven't been speaking with anybody. And then, you know, we have this latest Sp- Spider-Man trailer coming out, or came out. And for how many years now, Andrew and Toby have been like, oh no, we have nothing to do with this movie. And then, <laughs> and then that last scene in the trailer. And then Tom is like, where's the like in his reaction? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like ugh. Kevin's face too was like, shut up. <laughs> so, so anytime someone's also, like, was there any time? Anytime someone is like, I, I haven't been talking to anybody about this. Like, yeah, you have. You're in the show. <laughs> also, did you guys see Jamie Fox posted a, a picture on his Instagram, and it was like Electro in kind of in the clouds, and then there was three Spider Men and. <laughs> He really? did? Yeah, he posted it. And then like another post or another thing that he posted, he wrote hashtag chasing spiders. And you're like, come on, man. Wait, it wasn't from the movie though, was it? Was it like a Electro in the Clouds with three spiders like in, from a comic? Uh, I'll have to, I'll, I'll send you the, the picture offline. I don't want to go too far off topic, uh, okay. which we've been dancing off topic this entire time and it's been <laughs> wonderful. No, I have um, I'm sorry. This topic is <laughs> no, uh, no. this topic is about the brotherhood. You know, this is about Obi Wan and Anakin. It was a, it was a natural segue. Xanatos <laughs> uh, in the chat says, "Whoever narrated Master and Apprentice did a great Qui Gon and a horrible Mace Windu." <laughs> <laughs> he did, and he also yes. <laughs> they they keep making uh, Mace Windu like have a southern draw in his accent. <laughs> it's it's Why? just hilarious. Take a seat, young Skywalker. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's like when you when you do an Irish accent and then you start to go Jamaican a little bit. It's like it's it's like <laughs> they're too close yeah. together. Hi, I'd like uh, I'd like a pint of 
pint of whiskey. Never mind. <laughs> it wasn't uh, terrible. It wasn't, but it wasn't my best. Um, I know it's not everyone's opinion, but I really don't want Toby and Andrew. And yes, I've done a video on it on TikTok. Kenny, you're right. It's not everyone's opinions. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just the, the the story of the multiverse and the setting. I, I am going to keep this derailed. I'm sorry. The story of uh, the multiverse and where they're at in the MCU. It's like the only thing that does make sense is to introduce other universes. You can't avoid that. No. You can't. You can't keep. It's unavoidable. You can't keep uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, isolated in this, in what we know from Loki, uh, a cluster f of timelines and universes. Yeah. Also, they better give us Miles. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely, thousand yeah. percent. Even if I only get the clip of Miles, I love him so much, so I want to see Miles. I saw, I did see your TikTok where you were like. Um, you were like talking that about lizard who got punched and you're like you do realize miles can go invisible as well yeah i mean i, I don't actually think it's miles but i mostly because i don't want him introduced alongside that many other spider-men um I, I would love it though if like at the end of the journey they all leave and because the mcu is based more on the ultimate universe than it is the um than it is 616 so i would love it if that is just his universe already uh, but who knows who knows what we could could not see do we have any confirmation from feige that it that or feige that like 616 is the de facto universe that they have labeled this the mcu the mcu originally had its own designation and since then it's gotten nebulous but it did have its own designation separate from 616 for a long time i think that may be one of the reasons why we're doing multiverse is yeah. to kind of which i don't hate i kind of love it <laughs> just so many options now speaking of multiverse there's that new game that was announced from warner brothers that is their version of smash brothers but it's all the warner brothers properties <laughs> so Batman's in it. Superman's in it. Um, Arya Stark is in it. Um, oh yeah, I did see that. Shaggy. Uh, Shaggy Matthew is in Lillard it. Coming back as Shaggy. And, yeah, and they so they brought back all of the actual voice actors. So that's one of the like, because Nickelodeon did something like that, but they didn't bring any voices. This one they're bringing in all the voice actors for like Harley Quinn and all these people as well. Kevin Conroy is Batman in it. That's Batman. Wow, I'm just uh, I, 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 oh man, brain fart. I forgot what I was laughing at when you were talking. So, <laughs> goodbye thought. <laughs> um, Brooke wants to see Miles and Jake Johnson in live action Peter B. Parker. I would I would love to see a live action uh, Nicolas Cage Spider Man if that would be possible. <laughs> This this Peter Parker would be exploring the history of the curse word. <laughs> uh, X Core is just sitting here waiting for Oscar Isaac as Solid Snake. Uh, I like that. Oscar Isaac. I like that cast a lot. That's really good. And I also can't hand I can't handle him being in everything that I like because he's breaking my brain. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> also, when you saw Dune, did you see like, um, did you see Vitiate when he just like when he was disembarking from the ship and he had the armor and the shiny beard, just looking. If brutal. you think for a second that I've noticed every single thing he did in that movie, you'd be very wrong. He's <laughs> Daddy Atreides. It's so beautiful. He, but yeah, yeah. He just looked, he was fantastic. I was a little bit skeptical about him being um, Leto Atreides, but ended up being really great. I love that movie, by the way. I've seen it three times already. As soon as I saw him, I was like, I need to grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so glorious and like curly and he just looks great with like wild hair and stuff. Yeah, we need to be Sifus and like Kung Fu Masters to grow beards. This is about as, as substantial as it gets. 
Um, yeah, I, I maintain that you, you do have to do something really manly in order to gain <laughs> the ability. It's like an achievement you unlock, and then your face hair just goes and just like juts out of your face. And, and His is probably you. all the people simping over him that's giving him the beard power. It juts it, out exactly. and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Darthman86 says, don't get me wrong, I would love it, but we already have something like this Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. We have so many great actors coming back to reprise their roles. Having Toby and Andrew would be too much. I'm not dragging you, Kenny, at all. No, I'm just like acknowledging that what you already acknowledge, which is not a lot of people's uh, opinions. Um, I'm definitely not going to get you wrong. You know, everyone has their own opinion and you're entitled to, to that opinion. So I never feel like uh, I'm like trying to like drag you or anything like that. Um, but I, I think I just think a lot of people are, are just excited to see Toby and Andrew because they haven't for so long. Like narratively speaking, I, I do agree with you that it is too much. But since we haven't seen Toby and Andrew for a long time as Spider Man, it's kind of like a reunion. I I just wonder because the cycle of like nostalgia is it's like a twenty year loop, and. The MCU started in 2008, so eventually, is it going to be a snake that eats its own tail? Are we gonna? Is it just gonna like most most things end, and then it has a revival like 20 years later? But if the MCU continues for 20 years, is it just gonna become a wheel of time? I haven't seen Wheel of Time, but I want to. <laughs> yes, I do too. Sorry, segways are weird. <laughs> All right, let's 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 uh, talk about Dark Horse real quick. It's gonna be a really like it's gonna be a hit and run uh, segment um, simply because all we have to do is just tell you guys about it. <laughs> uh, so we've been working with IDW on on High Republic Adventures for a while now, and uh, suffice to say, things have been slowing down. Um, we've been getting a lot of signs that you know things we're not going to be the same. And then we got some hints from Daniel Jose Older. We got some hints from our contacts that, uh, yeah, it wouldn't, it, it just wouldn't be the same. And then things were changing. And then, you know, the trades reported this. So now, um, it is official that Dark Horse Comics is coming back to Star Wars. And if you're unfamiliar, they are, you know, they were part of the EU way back when oh i am i am breaking the stream sorry folks that's me playing with my mouse um, now you know what happens when i play with my mouse there you go and it fits sorry um so yeah choco vamp you're the, you're the legends kind of like powerhouse um yeah i mean dark horse has been in the game for a very long time i'm sure uh booba fett with your it sounds like you've delved into legends as well oh, yeah. and with your love of boba fett you you know about those dark horse comics what do you think about dark horse uh bringing this back i'm pretty excited um as i have mentioned before i not, I, I love i love legends and, and the eu not all of it is good some of it is absolutely awful but i still it's very nostalgic for me i still love it so i'm very excited to see them get that label again like i've got a whole box just I, I i don't have every comic but i have a disgusting amount of dark horse comics <laughs> uh shout out to um uh what is it screaming citadel what mm. there is there's one of my favorites and i can't think of the name of it and it's it's a, a vader story um but yeah dark horses has had it for a long time if i remember the name of it i'll, I'll recommend it to you guys because it's like a it's a one shot type of deal and vader makes friends with this uh this this guy who has kind of like these deformities and they become like friends uh, over this course of this mission and it's it's awesome I, darth vader in the ghost prison that's what it is uh, i've heard of it yes uh, well, as it says here, they're the publisher from very various titles like Dark Empire, Art of the Star Wars Rebels. Um, and uh, just just so you guys know, uh, as part of this release, they will also be handling High Republic through to the rise of the First Order. So 
Like, I'm just thinking about how Dark Horse handles High Republic. Because if you, because I feel like, oh, so, so Marvel is handling the mainline High Republic comic, and if IDW is no longer doing High Republic Adventures, or at least finishing this current run, what do they do next? What does Dark Horse do for High Republic? Do you have any ideas? I think being a much larger publisher, we could potentially have more stories happening simultaneously uh, without worry of any publishing issues or um, you know sometimes there's there's issues with getting things shipped out and all that that good stuff so I don't I think they have a, a larger backbone for producing more stories and maybe we'll get more content from all of the eras simultaneously yeah as they say in chat makes it darker is that true? Is Dark Horse uh, notoriously like a darker, more like? I do. I do feel like that's accurate, <laughs> a little bit. Like, and I so I like read all of these comics, and I used, I used to draw all the time as well when I was younger. I kind of gave up on it forever ago. Long story, but I used to use the Dark Horse comics as um, references a lot when I would draw my own comic books. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, they do tend to be. A little bit more edgier or like darker themed than what you would usually think of when you think of star wars that's true like even the even the mara jade run was pretty like dark the boba fett one definitely was i oh man I, this is a sort of a side thing but we do know that canonically speaking there is a house cast now among the mandalorians I need Johto cast to be brought in uh, to canon. I need him to have been pretending to be Boba Fett in this five year gap period. And I need Boba Fett to hunt him down and take him out like he does in the Dark Horse comics. How much of open seasons would they have to change to do that? Uh, I mean, open seasons is more of a Django story, but... To fit into canon? Um, it's it's hard because because in canon we haven't seen we haven't spent a lot much time with the Mandalorian culture, but um, in that story, I, I I don't I don't see it working because we we have no confirmation that Django was actually considered a Mandalorian. You know, it says. We know he was a foundling. We don't know, and we know he fought with them during the Mandalorian War, uh, but we don't know that he took the oath and became Mandalorian afterwards. Actually, George Lucas specifically made Filoni put in that line with Olmec. Um, like George Lucas said, make yeah. sure that he says that he's not a Mandalorian. We don't know why. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what Lucas has against it, but. Well, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Didn't he say in, in, in one of the, one of his like um, Star Wars magazine or insider interviews that he, when he wrote Django, he didn't he wasn't he wrote him specifically to be like an insult to Mandalorians, like it's like a person that stole armor and was just being a, a complete like disgrace to it. I feel like that tracks for something that Lucas would have said. And absolutely tracks with things that Karen <laughs> Travis has said. <laughs> what, did, what did Karen Travis say? Oh, Karen Travis didn't get to finish her book series. Um, her whole book series was about Mandalorians and stuff like that. And and then um, when the Clone Wars came out and introduced the Mandalorians, it just took a dump on all of her plans. And she had to. She she just never got to finish her series. And was not happy about it um a lot of people are upset about it because that's her stuff is pretty <laughs> beloved uh julia i did have a premonition about quirky appearing in a dark horse comic so we'll see no matter what no matter what you don't fail yeah. um i just think i just think um so Dark Horse has a lot of great, 
great artists and, and writers and, and this isn't to like yeah. put down idw in any way but it would be interesting to see kind of like the delta between the two you know in terms of like what comes out next high republic adventures just changes art style i wonder what's i wonder you know, how uh, lula and zine are gonna look next or how markion is it's markion <laughs> watch the latest high republic and uh high republic show it's markion <laughs> It was intended to be Markion. Yes, that's what they said. <laughs> what do you say, Christina? About him or about... How, how do you say his name? Which camp are you? I'm really bad at pronunciation. So, like, I'm, scared, I'm scared to even say, like, Avar's name because I'm afraid, like, that's not how it's pronounced even though it's clearly spelled out that way. <laughs> or, like, Elzar. Like, I'm scared to say any of their names. Well, you said all their names correctly just now. Did I though? Like I don't know. <laughs> okay, well I'll give you the two camps. You're it's either Martian or Markion. I like Markion better. That's how I say it, Matt. It sounds better to me. Martian sounds like Martian and I don't like it. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought too. Um so so is this a Brandon, are you Markion as well? Or I'm Mar- Markion. Uh but like the colloquial version has become Martian and it's become the past uh, the path of least resistance but if you recall I mean, if you go back even on this show I always said Markian until um, uh, until the Tempest Runner audiobook yeah uh, Julia says four years of French means I say Martian will that does not mean that Marquion is exactly French, no? How do they say it in the audiobook? They, they say, say Marquion. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but the writers the writers have, have come out and said, no, in the writer's room it was it was Marquion all the time. We discussed it at length and we decided on Marquion. And it just didn't stay that when it went. But but then they said, you know what, there is a long-standing history of people saying Princess Leah or Princess Leia or Han or and Han. Han. Um, ben you know, Solo the, or being Solo. <laughs> <laughs> the, the old uh, the old audio books said Coruscant instead of Coruscant. Uh, what? Yeah. yeah. Coruscant. And I like cringe every time. I'm like, you why do you say it with disdain like that? Like, what's the <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, I guess we can move on from Dark Horse Comics and kind of just go in on our open forum. You know, whatever you want to talk about, let's talk about. And I, I guess we are talking about Markion right now. <laughs> <laughs> in Italian, yeah, so- it would be hard C. So that's my default, St. Pat says. Uh, I just, you know, my default is whatever the writer said it was, that's all. I said Martian first, but, like, I was torn between the two. When I first started reading Light of the Jedi, it was like, Martian, Marchion, Markion. <laughs> Which one is it? <clears throat> um, Keep Trennis to Darth Plagueis Pipeline. <laughs> What does that mean? It's too small for me to read. Yeah, and now it's uh, it, it just we, we always talk about certain pipelines of how you know we I like, do believe there is there is a pipeline there because we know that there was a Jedi Trennis that, that left the Order became one of the Lost Lost oh, Twenty. Yeah. I'm curious where. You know how how that whole flow may happen, uh, but I think the most prevalent pipeline is the theater kid to Star Wars <laughs> pipeline. What is the theater the theater kid to Star Wars pipeline? Uh, my current theory, and you know, I just made a video on it, is that all villains in Star Wars um, are are theater kids. Um, and in the case of Anakin, he needed to be a theater kid to get that part out of him and since he wasn't allowed to that's why he, he kind of went a little crazy um 
we talked about how Darth Maul is always in a constant state of auditioning to be Iago. Um, and uh, <laughs> they are all just very, very theatrical, we'll say. Wow. Especially Darth Maul. Yeah. Oh, no, me. I can see him in my mind's eye. <laughs> no and you're like, people don't talk like that, dude. <laughs> You've been reading a lot of Shakespeare and it's just coming out, you know, like you need a, a, a glass of water, uh, <laughs> touch some grass, get a hug. I don't know. How does Plagueis fit as a theater kid? St. Pat says. Or asks. That remains to be seen, but um, he was he he was actually at least in the Plagueis book was the least theatrical. He was the most like matter of fact of like I'm just gonna do the stuff behind the scenes. I don't really care who notices versus Palpatine and his speeches. <laughs> um, Han and Leia sent Ben to Jedi training. Instead of theater camp, so he laughed out. <laughs> you guys everybody... don't appreciate my art. <laughs> Does everybody have to be a theater kid? I, I just, I think it tracks. I have a yes. theater kid, it tracks. <laughs> are, are you a theater kid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He even has like the, the larger than life movements and stuff because you're doing it on display. You can't do, you know, it has to be bigger so that the audience can see and understand. Yeah. Exactly. They need to, to see your emotions, even if they your face is too far away for them to see it clearly. And so, you know, I can see it. Just just saying. Keep this stuff coming. You guys are you guys are amazing in the chat. Um, you can't convince me Shakespeare didn't take a time machine to Dave Filoni's house in the mid two thousands. How 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 would that how would that work? He'd be like, Bill, is that you? Like, yes, sir. <laughs> I got a new one for you. His name's Maul. <laughs> Oh, it's man. like the opposite of uh, of the Back to the Future beam of like, You know that sound you've been looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What happened what happened this week other than other than what we just covered in Star Wars? Anything new? Did you guys did you guys I know I, I know Christina entered the sweepstakes. Brandon, did you enter oh, yeah. the sweepstakes? Absolutely. Everybody in the um, chat, let me know if you entered. Do it. I think I saw that. I think I saw that Haley booked it. Already. She did. She did. Oh, okay. So it's a winner and three guests. Guys, everyone join. Everyone, everyone, sign up. We'll share the love. Yeah, and whoever wins, me and Pip will happily go with you. Yes. <laughs> we will happily um St. Pat just found out about the sweepstakes we'll get to it sign up for it I would enter but Australia oh it's not available in Australia man that reminds me of Disney Plus Day where they were like we're we're teaming up with food uh, something to deliver you food only and then people started entering and they're like but they don't deliver outside of LA. <laughs> they didn't even oh, deliver to no. me. I was two miles outside of their delivery uh, radius. So okay, so like ten people are gonna are gonna enter. That's nice. Could have done like Seinfeld and like get a closet somewhere, but then <laughs> have it delivered there. Um. So, but, 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 but I got. I have to ask, what is the source? Like, what began your love affair with? I'm trying to think of the exact moment. So Return of the Jedi is actually the first Star Wars movie that I ever saw. I think it was like three. And I thought he was so cool, even though he's only in it for like a few minutes. Um, and then 
because it annoyed my brother that I liked him so much, I think that I kept like kind of doubling down on it, but then getting actually interested in him. And so I would read every bit of EU stuff that was out about him. When I used to get the Star Wars Insider magazine back in the day, if there was anything of Boba Fett in there, I'd cut it out, stick it in my binder. I was that nerd in school where people had Leo, you know, Leo DiCaprio, and I had like Boba Fett and like Squall <laughs> from Final Fantasy VIII in my binder. Um, but I don't know. I thought he was so mysterious and so cool. And I have to be honest, I got a little salty when they changed his voice um, to Tamura's voice in the special, or like when they went back and redid the special editions. It still kind of bothers me because I like the original voice of Boba Fett. Um, was that like Himalayan kind of salt or was that like was that like truffle was, salt type of salty? It's probably Celtic sea salt. Got it. <laughs> Fine Celtic sea salt. Um, but I like it now because now I've grown to love like Tim and like all of his work and super excited to see him as Boba Fett again. Um, or technically this is the first time we've seen him as Boba Fett. But you know what I mean. Um, yep. But yeah, that was just that was saying that my nickname, my, my, my screen name, my gamer tag is, is Boba Fett. And that was a nickname I got in high school because I'm yeah. top heavy and I like Boba Fett. So it became <laughs> a nickname and then just stuck to it. And yeah. He's not my favorite character, but Luke Luke Skywalker is my favorite character. But Boba Fett is my favorite, like previously non-center Star Wars character. Gotcha. Was there anything there outside of outside of like what we know of Boba Fett now? Was he was he always like when he got yeeted into the Sarlacc pit? Were you did you leave did you leave that movie being like well that, that's the end of that guy? <laughs> oh no. No, no. I always, I always knew that there was no way that guy was dead. Um, um, and of course, there's like, yeah. And there's like tales of the bounty hunter and stuff too. And I want to say that there is a story of him getting out and like being all deformed and like messed up yeah. because, I mean, you're in stomach there's, acid. You're gonna be there's burned. two stories of him getting out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would read everything. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. See, I'm telling you, not all of Legends is good, okay? But it is a big question mark. You're preaching to the uh, choir. So, <laughs> what? Uh, it, it's one of those. It's the thing. Like, I, I love, I, I love Legends. I, I truly do. But it's kind of like the good old days. You know, you think about like, oh, the good old days, and we used to go out and do that. Do you remember when you were in those days? You were pissed <laughs> off all the time. Like, nothing was going your way. When you think back on it, it's it's all fond memories. That's kind of how I feel about it. But is there anything um, from those stories, the good stuff? Actually, let, let, me, let me say it this way. Are there two or three things from Legends that you hope get you know reshuffled back into canon with book of boba fett and is there anything that you definitely do not want them to bring back i'm gonna go definitely do not first because camilla not camilla i'm sorry she basically is like the first version of camilla um callista i or callista was callista <laughs> hated hated i can't put callista yeah i can't i don't know what it was about her it made me hate those particular books. She was, I can't, no, mm -mm. The concept and, of downloading uh, a, a, a chick into your friend and then dating that person. She's just creepy she's just, and weird, but also I didn't like her. Like, I didn't like her yeah, personality. She rubbed me the wrong way, maybe because I had a crush on Lucunos, but I did not like her. <laughs> um, <laughs> they already brought Rex on, which was the one thing that I, I thought would fit into the new Star Wars world. And when it happened, I was extremely excited because it works. Um, I know everyone says Mara J, but I kind of would like to see her. There's no way there's no way it would work the way that I would want it to work. So maybe not. Um, so if they did canonize would, Mara J in like an adaptive form, would it be just a, would you be able to learn to love that Mara J? If it's Favro and Filoni behind it, probably. They, they have not let me down yet with anything they've done. Um, I can't think of a single thing that they've done that I don't like, if I'm being honest. Because I've been very skeptical about things. Like, even when they cast Ahsoka, I was like, ugh. Not that I didn't want to see her again, because of course I did, but I was very worried that, like, it wouldn't be done right. And it's Filoni's baby, and he did he did right by her. And so far, everything's been excellent, especially The Mandalorian. So I'm sure that even though it wouldn't be what I specifically want, I'm sure they would make it in a way that I would still 
like it. Same with same with the Anakin Force Ghost, which I am adamantly detest in the Return of the Jedi, making it Hayden. I really it's the biggest thing in all of it. Even worse than Han not shooting like first, it bothers me. <laughs> really? I hate it so much, and but like I I'm telling you, in the Ahsoka show, if he shows up and says, Hey Snips to Ahsoka, it will forgive all of that. I will be totally fine with seeing Hayden Christians at the end of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> So I have faith. I trust I, them. I trust the process. When I was little, I didn't know who Sebastian Shaw was. When I saw the Force Ghost at the end, I was like, who is that? You literally just saw his face, though. You just saw his, when he takes his helmet off, you see his face. I was expecting it like Humpty Dumpty. Like, <laughs> he's, he's like a uh, Billy Joel Eggman type, type deal. He just had, he was just not, he was like the unscarred version of Sebastian Shaw. But like, yeah, it, I trust the process. Um, so far they've done everything right, that they've, little snippets they brought in from the EU have been done in ways that I really like. Even just mentioning Teres Kasi and Solo, I was the only person in the theater, by the way, that was like, oh my God, I literally like shouted in the theater to people like, what are you excited about? I'm like, but I said Teres Kasi. And, and we got a little extra taste of it in the War of the Bounty Hunters comic. Did you read that? I have not yet. Okay. Yeah, you guys jump into the War of the Bounty Hunters. Um, it's and, five and issues. It's, and it's, you can jump into it. And it's, it's going to bleed into Crimson Rain, uh, which I, I think I, I think you'll appreciate it for sure. <laughs> I'll have to check that one out. The story arcs for that is Crimson Rain... Um, and then Hidden Empire, right? We'll be coming after that, yeah. Lots of Terra Kasi there. Yes, maybe. We'll, oh my God! If we get another game, I will be so happy. Well, I, I have to change my answer for that question now. It's gonna be bring Arden Lynn into, <laughs> yeah. into canon. Um, yes, yeah. What's up, Bane's rule? Um, I like that idea by Xenatus. Mara Jade as an Inquisitor instead of the original. That could work for her still being dark side and changing to being a good guy. By way of Quinlan Voss. That could work. I said I said that jokingly, but then like. <laughs> no, that could actually work. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, you you actually just solved it because my my whole thing is like I don't see any possible way of bringing Mara Jade in that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that doesn't make people angry because of the amount of changes you would have to do to the character. But but if we have Quinlan Foss running around the galaxy and we have Mara, yeah, I, I like I like that. I also would like to see Shadows of the Empire be canon because I, I personally love Shadows of the Empire a lot. I even have the soundtrack from the book and I still listen to it. I need Prince Sizor brought in the canon. Caesar, Sizor. I, I don't know how to, I, I can spell Caesar? it. Caesar? Caesar, yeah. So I, I, I keep saying it. I need, I need him brought to canon. He's um, cool. He's super cool. He's kind of problematic with uh, like consent and stuff, yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> that that is uh, a little thing they can do with that, you know. There's ways around it. <laughs> All right, Xanatos 1138, we solved it. Hashtag we solved Mara Jade. George Lucas still hates her. <clears throat> um, Xanatos. Uh, well, either Xanatos or um, St. Pat, uh, or St. Pat's is up until the Yuzhan Fong. I liked Legends. After them, it was so weird. Um, it got back normal after them, but they were so gross that I don't ever want to see them. Ever. Yes, they, they were yeah, disgusting. And like, and whenever I just imagine how they must smell, and I, I want to throw up just thinking about it. Why? Yeah. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of when, like, Sliders came. I don't know if you guys ever watched Sliders, but, like, when it started getting weird with the uh, Cro-Mags, I think that's what they were called, right? The bad guys? 
that's what they kind of remind me of. And then it was just like, what is happening? Because the Legends <laughs> got really weird after that and didn't feel like Star Wars anymore, to me anyway. Oh my so. gosh, it well, happens so with Doctor Who Legacy, too. Legacy of the Force <laughs> did feel like a return to form, but there was some stuff mm. like, you know, the... the the the, um, the Kellic nest, uh, what's it called? The swarm. It's a trilogy of books. No, I can't think of it. Um, joiner. Yeah, the joiner nest. That that was just weird. It was super weird to me. But uh, I don't know. Some of, some of the late Boba Fett stuff was actually pretty cool, uh, especially when he got around to, to training Jaina. And yeah, he became Mandalore, and then like they developed this sort of um, this sort of like disease or whatever that was targeted to his DNA, and so and they they detonated on Mandalore, so he could never go back home. Like there's a bunch of like interesting stuff. Um, Murder Gav. There's some cool stuff in there, but. That Overall, stuff could it's, still be added to the new stuff too. If they did it right, they could still take pieces of that and make it still work into canon Star Wars for sure. Yeah, and I think they want to because they, I mean, they mentioned Waylon already. They mentioned Mount Tantus. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where things go. And there's a bunch of leftover. So Mount Tant- Tantus was like the Emperor's vault that he kept things in, and it's this famous from the um, Heir to the Empire series where. Um, they got the cloning tubes and stuff, which was specifically downplayed in that book. They were actually after stealth ship technology, but we know in the Clone Wars, there is a stealth ship that was introduced, and we don't know what happened, and that was a prototype. We don't know what happened to that technology. We don't really know what happened to the technology behind the Malevolents. We don't know what happened to um, the Zillow Beast. I think all that stuff is being stored in Mount Tantus, and we might see it have some sort of resurgence. That's interesting. Um, there's definitely a lot of poss- uh, potential for, for those stories to um, be housed there. Um, but Christina, I wanted to ask you a question. Do you play Sotor? I did play. I have not... In a very long time. Will you be coming back for Legacy of the Sith? Oh yes, oh yes, Will probably. You be, are you part of our public server, or are you part of the the book club? She is um, now. <laughs> I uh, so I played for a long time, and then I played with my brother, and he stopped playing, and then I stopped playing, and then it's kind of it's on my computer. Still, I mean, it needs to be updated and everything else, but I, I I, should start playing it again. I know other people who do. I just don't want to get abandoned again because then everybody will play for like a couple weeks and then they stop playing. We would be honored if you would join us. Man, you're so cool, man. You're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the same thing that happened with us. I, we played for, uh, I played for a while you know, into, I I think, the first expansion after Vanilla. Then I stopped, and then I came back for a little bit for, like, um, Rise of the Hut, and then I stopped. Then I met Choco, uh, Sawyerism, and Cal. We started playing again, came back, and so now, come join us. We're all coming back for Legacy of the Sith. It'll be a family. (laughs) Um, I should I should like I did have a lot of fun when I did play. Yeah. It just sucked when everybody stopped playing because <laughs> then you're by yourself and it's just like not that fun. I don't know. I mean, I was going through a major breakup at the time, but I played through all eight storylines by myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But then you but, uh, uh, you encouraged me to play through eight eight classes as well because of that. Yeah, uh, but they've also for anyone who tried playing it way back in the day. They've changed it a lot, so it's not anywhere near a grind fest that it used to be. Oh, you you so used to, you, you you didn't even get a speeder until like I want to say like night or something like that. Imagine yeah. imagine running around on Hoth or Tatooine without a speeder. 
that's that that was your life and having to do all of the planetary quests you didn't have you know now you can just play the story ones and it'll work so that's nice that's good to know because that was <laughs> i don't mind grinding but i do mind it when they make it utterly tedious where it's just not fun like why do i need to spend literally two hours to get from this part of <laughs> the planet to the other come on and, and, and there and there are um even going further with that with a new expansion that's coming out where like you would have to grind to get every piece of gear in order to have like a set bonus set bonuses are going away the set bonus will be attached to a single piece that you can equip or unequip like they're 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 taking they're making a lot of quality of life improvements you can just play through your 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 story quest but now you can go open with your combat style they've they've separated combat styles from story quests or from your character story so you could be a stormtrooper or you can go with the trooper route but you could be a sniper or what the scoundrels were or no, they what haven't separated, anyone else like they haven't separated the class story they've separated the weapon mechanics to um, and made that, the fighting I mean. styles yeah I like that okay that's cool that's good to know yeah so I want to be a Jedi uh, what am I right now <laughs> Jedi Knight no, I'm a sentinel. I'm gonna be a sentinel You're with sentinel. a with, with a staff saber. That's what I'm gonna be, for sure. With a staff saber, those are so cool. What was your class? I think I had three characters. It's been a really long time. I can't pop it up right now to go check. I know I had a smuggler or scoundrel. Is it a scoundrel or a smuggler? Did it matter? I don't remember. Uh, they were bo- both. They were yeah. And Same then thing. I had a I had a cheese bounty hunter. Right? Or was yep. she this? I think, yeah, I think she was. She's found it. I know I made. Was it a Sith? But I never played as it. And then I had. <laughs> I had several, but I played mostly as my smuggler. Okay. And I was very angry with. What was the dude that you were paired up with when you were the smuggler? Who was your little partner, Ray? I tried to romance him, and I was doing all the right things, and he refused <laughs> to like. He refused to my gifts, and I was getting so mad because I wasted so much time trying to romance this, this jerk. Um, I can't remember what his name was. I'm trying to remember. But, yeah. Is was it the Deveronian? No. <laughs> it's the I can't remember anymore, right? but yeah, that was the beginning yeah. of the smuggler uh, campaign. Yes. Because you can be rude to him, but I was like, no, I want to... There was something you got out of romancing him that I wanted. Because <laughs> I think at the time you couldn't romance, like... Corso. You couldn't. Yeah, yeah, Corso. Corso. I was so mad at him. I was doing all of the right things, and he was like, no, you're too good for me. I'm like, no, just come on. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Corso, Corso Riggs. I was, like, thinking to myself, is my character... No. No, my character isn't related to Corso. <laughs> no, no. But um, when I, and, and this is not a spoiler, but when you get to the end in game content where they start making it more story driven again, um, a lot of the companions from all of the classes start showing up for you regardless of what, what class you are. And it makes it for some really fun and interesting storytelling. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, so who are you going to flirt with next, Choco? If the option pops up, I take it. I just, you know. That's why I'm asking. Uh, flirt, it's the yes. first one you're going to summon as your free class. <laughs> and you're going to be like, what up? <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> I mean, you know, me and my, 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 my Sith lady. Um, her name's not coming to me, but, you know. Lana? Blonde Sith lady. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. She's the current romance champion for me. Um, <laughs> no, my Sith. My Sith. No, it is Lana. Okay. It is. Uh, I guess last question in that that in regards to Sotor, what's the longest streak of months? 
you have let them charge you and accumulate <laughs> cartel coins before you were like, I need to cancel this. I think it was actually a year for me because I kept meaning to play and I was like, oh no, my, I'll play. I'll have a, I don't want to cancel it. <laughs> and I was like, why am I still doing this? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was at least a year. I'm almost yeah. there right now. Same. <laughs> About the same. I'm too loyal to Star Wars, dang it. Like, it's a problem. There is no reason for that. <laughs> well, there's, there's also this, like, uh, even, even if I don't play it, I still want it to continue. <laughs> I've gotten more than my share of, of, of value, so I'll, I'll allow it to continue. But then yeah. you play and you have all the cartel coins and something cool comes out and you're like, that's mine. Got it. Done. That's Let's fair. go. Yeah. You know? Exactly. That's 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 the whole fun of it, right? Logging in and having that as many cartel coins. Also, an argument can be made that it's just a complete hassle to just resubscribe when you do come back. You just rather log in. You're a subscriber. You're like, yeah. That's that. literally another reason why I didn't. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I'll play again. <laughs> Yeah. Five years later, oh, I, it. I don't know if you've ever unsubscribed and then logged in, and they're like, "Okay, but before you play, you're gonna have to delete several characters." And you're like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> what?" And, and you have too many credits, and like, you may have too many credits. That's rude. There's there's a limit on how many credits you can hold at a time if you are not a subscriber. You can't have the other ones. I don't. I don't know. If that's does that does that apply to how many you can hold, or is, can you not have them all in your personal vault? Um, I I immediately resubscribe, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So yes, join 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 us in playing uh, Legacy of the Sith. We would love it if you would play with us. I mean, I, I should, I should, especially since I, I have people I can play with. I should do it. When does it? When does uh, that come out? Sorry, out. December fourteenth. Yeah, I, I, something like that. Yeah. Although I, I do want to log back in and finish the end game stuff right now, so I can start a new character for that. I don't know. Just say I'm when. I'm so undecided. <laughs> say one. You act like we weren't playing Apex Legends last night. Like, All right. We could have been playing Solo Tour, you know? <laughs> but sometimes it's the night for shoot, shooting things, right? That's all. Yeah. Um, so do you guys have and any for me, final... usually it's running away from... <laughs> Dead by daylight. Running away from killers. Run away. Yeah, um, we're, doing, we're doing the one that does the stepping, yeah. Uh, do you guys have any final thoughts any final things you want to talk about before we wrap things up i can't think of anything <laughs> um thank you guys for having me again i really appreciated chit chatting nerd stuff with you guys Absolutely. It's, it it, it's appreciated it's always wonderful when like you know we, we have someone on and it's and it doesn't feel like it's our first time talking to that person. You know what I mean? Everything just flows naturally, and you're like, "Is this? Do we? Do we just become best friends?" You know. Type, <laughs> type so we we appreciate you and all of your content. So anyone who's not already following Boba Fett, please do. Um, she's wonderful. Absolutely. It was. It's like. It's like. Um, I like to quote Phantom Menace at this point for everything now, which is, "Are we friends?" Yep, all my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was an absolute um, joy to have you on Diet in the Forest. Um, every time someone can be as agile as you were today with the, the, the amount of topics we covered, going from like, you know, the latest news of Star Wars to discussing Spider Man and just like going with the throws and, and, and just and, and going with the flow, it's, it's always incredible. So, of course, you are now a series regular on Died of the Force, and you will be back sooner rather than later. And I have it in my memory banks that the next time I do have you on, I will have Miss Eggy on as well. And we can have a cocktail hour and all that good stuff. 
<laughs> um, Chaco, any final the topics? Thoughts? Will definitely go everywhere that way. Um, yes, it will. Nope. Uh, head empty, only just stock image uh, book covers uh, in my brain, and <laughs> and, and mullet mullet one mullet one Kenobi. <laughs> Oh, Nightmare fuel. <laughs> it, hey, it could be worse. It could be Puppet Yoda from from the, from the Phantom Menace. Um, I still maintain that Rebels Yoda's worse than that, but yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna make a poll tomorrow. Rebels we'll, Yoda is we'll see, but... Rebels Yoda is cinematically more accurate, but it is ugly. I will say that. <laughs> How is that? He looks. He looks like because if you put him, Hannibal Lecter cosplaying Yoda. Because if you put him side by What's side, name? I'm with Anthony if you put Hopkins. him side by side like with Hopkins. with Empire Yoda, it does look like they were actually trying to recreate that look. It does look that he's way. He's based he's based off the Kenner toy specifically from like the original Kenner toy, which looks like he's melting. It's so <laughs> ugly. Okay, but but Papa Yoda looks like a cokehead. <laughs> <laughs> At least that uh, Yoda's having a good time. Okay. I, I, it's, I would rather hang out with that Yoda, but like... Yeah. I wouldn't look at him. <laughs> Don't Looking. look at me. <laughs> Found some ideas that you have, I would say. <laughs> uh, Kenny says, raid time. Trying to get 1K by my birthday, February 21st. If you love Star Wars and Marvel, please give me a follow on TikTok. Same name. Go give DarthMan86 a follow. Try to get him to 1K. Show some love to everyone in the Star Wars TikTok community. I would love to thank uh, Boba Fett or Christina for joining us on Diet in the Force. It was a pleasure. Uh, and we will have her again soon. But uh, that's the end. Oh wait, no, that is not the end. I do have to shout out our Squadron 7 members, of course. Um, first and foremost, we have St. Pat in the X-Wing, Casco Hecho in the Whisper, uh, Grandmaster Bale, Harith, and DePaul in the Super Star Destroyer Fleet, Nerd Connor and Gray in the U-Wings, Levi Bond in the Interceptor, Masa in the Y-Wings, X-Core Gamer Skills in the A-Wing, Cal 4, Car 2, Haley, Corelli Coffee Works in, in the Ghost, um, Brian with the beard, Brian with the bread, Brian with the beard, bread, Brian with the bread beard in Boba Fett Starship, Chaco and Arya in the Jedi Vector, and our reserve pilots, Jonski, Julie, Christine, Xanatos, 1138, and we have some newbies as well. We have Soda Man in the T70 X Wing, that's Poe's X Wing. We have Nedrex TT in the Black Ace. We have Mara J. Skywalker and Bariqua Wookie in the Twilight. Speaking of brotherhood. Ooh, um, Twilight. Yeah. Mabe in the Razor Crest, Podbon's podcast, and Kenobi in Jedi Starfighter 2. Scholar, Jesse, the Defender, Chris in the Lady Luck, and Brooke Dazzler in the Mantis. Wow, that lined up perfectly with the song that I was just listening to and that everyone can hear, so that was awesome. <laughs> in any case, guys, that is it. On to the next one. For light and for life. We are all the Republic. May the force be with you, always. Element 7, Lore Master, learn Star Wars faster. Darth Chaco, slaying haters like Lord Vader. Ooh!